book man book man what you gonna do what you gonna do read a book or two book man book man what you gonna do what you gonna do read a book all right two. going on another uh, large book pick 100 boxes of books I'm going to evaluate them and uh, I'll probably have to make a multiple trips hook up the trailer get them to the place I'm limited space baby so I gotta work with this and see what we got if they want them all gone I'll have to give a big bulk offer if I can cherry pick that's what I prefer select out and uh, get them in the shop so yeah take you on the road with me again Yep, just passed an Amish guy on his horse and buggy. I told him to get back to work and quit joyriding. He didn't take too kindly, but um... up 26% this year. I'm doing something right. What's interesting is I read a New York Times article that uh, said, it was from last year that said bookstores, people opening independent bookstores increased by 15%. Very interesting to me when everybody thinks it's going out the window. But you're always going to have a collector's market for books. Children's books are always going to be popular. They always... Next uh, book pick here. I'm in the hills of Mount Upton. Um, it's a very large book pick. I'm dressed for the occasion, of course. Shorts and boots. Wouldn't have it any other way. Gotta be professional here. So anyhow, there's a lot of books in here and um, really neat. We'll see what we come out with. All right, so I'm working on whittling it down. Got some set aside here. Still got a whole bunch to go through. I'm putting the ones I've been through here. So it's been quite a bit. I cleared two rooms and now I'm cleaning this last, the last big, big room here, the dining room. So there's quite a bit of, it's quite a bit of work, but it's fun. Alright, so I just purchased this cart here. Her grandfather made it. And what's really neat is they would, when the wife was doing the laundry outside, they'd put the babies in it. So it's like almost like a on wheels playpen, which I thought was really neat. This is an oldie. So, show you the bottom. Then I also got a, I also got a really neat, um, it's not wicker, but it's an old hamper from the 1800s I forget what kind of wood this is called I got it in the vehicle and I'll get it out and show it. it's got a nice lid on it and old hinges and I'm gonna soak this to tighten this up it's got some condition issues but it's a really neat old primitive piece and I like the primitives so anyways day two in the books and day three I'll bring the trailer and try to get the books out of here and I finished the uh, the pick out in Mount Upton I'm loaded up back here got the cradle thing and uh, a bunch of odds and ends front nice little milker stool type situation trailers filled with uh, is loaded up with shelves and fireplace grates and all sorts of good stuff so I'm bringing this over to uh, primitive uh, 
Uh, what the hell does Steve call it? Antique, red brick antiques and salvage. Because <laughs> I'm building that book loft up there. My glasses are still crooked. I look like a fool. So here's a cool find in my pick. This is uh, Bambi, Life in the Woods by Felix, by Felix Salton. Um, Simon and Shuster, 1928. Now this is a first edition, but <clears throat> Simon and Shuster um, says first printing in America, July 1928. It's a first edition, but I, I, I do not believe it's a first print. I think it's an early printing. Um, or why would it say uh, first printing in America, July 1928? It's definitely an American edition. It's illustrated by Kurt Weiss. So this is where a little bit of research comes in. <clears throat> and sometimes certain things take longer than others. <clears throat> but it's a beautiful book. It's illustrated nicely. It's a, it's in decent shape, but it, it's missing its... Um, it have a wrap, wrapper, they call them, dust jacket a wrapper on it and I believe a slip box it's also slightly sl slanted to the right there's all sorts of different condition factors to take into consideration when going into a book like this uh, collectors are very particular and very picky about their book and since it's missing and there's a little stain within and you have your inscription so you really have to know everything <clears throat> And, t and take all these um, into consideration when pricing something like this. So, but very nice find. All right, so I'm going to show you another little gem that's been found. Um, this is a very cool book. It's a first edition, The Gospel of Wealth by Andrew Carnegie, published in 1900. I'll show you the title page here. I believe Carnegie originally wrote an article in like 1889. Um, and, uh, but this is the first publication of it. It's very cool, very rare book to have. And, um, it has its condition issues, of course. 1886, that's when I think his original article was published. But, um, it's a very cool, rare book. And basically what Carnegie was speaking on was, uh, the power of philanthropy. And how those that are very wealthy... Um, should be putting money into different social uh, avenues to help the public out and that it's a good thing to, to make for a better society um, the one th the one thing that's really interesting so basically there's also um, with the idea of philanthropy there, there's also different foundations that that have been set up uh, tax exempt foundations and one thing that's interesting if you're interested in the subject, there was something called the Reese Committee in the 50s. And um, they investigated these foundations like the Carnegie, Rockefeller, Ford Foundation. And there's a book out there called Foundations by Renee Wormser. And um, basically what they found out was that these tax-exempt foundations, and this came out in congressional testimony, mind you, they had access to the minutes of these exempt foundations and they found out they found that the boards of each were interlocking with members on each board were interlocking whether it be Ford Carnegie and they all had the same uh, agenda and that was to merge a uh, communist system with the American uh, collectivism basically so these different social uh, programs were to make a people basically dependent on them and subservient um, but this book gets into this I'll read you the back of it real quick if you're interested this is a searching analysis of some of America's most powerful tax-exempt foundations their actions as opposed to their stated purposes the interlocking groups of men who run them their influence on the country at large the author as counsel to the Reese Committee which investigated foundations for the last Republican Congress gained a unique insight into the inner workings of the various Rockefeller, Carnegie, and Ford created giants. He also witnessed the intense and powerful opposition to any investigation of these multi-billion dollar public trusts. The Reese investigation was virtually hamstrung from the start to its early demise, which was aided and abetted by leading newspapers of the country. It is difficult for the public to understand, writes Mr. Wormser, that some of the great foundations which have done so much for us in some fields have acted tragically 
fiscally against the public interest and others. But the facts are, they're, they're for the unprejudiced to recognize. The power of the individual foundation giant is enormous. When there is like-mindedness among a group of these giants, which apparently is due to the existence of a closely knit group of professional administrators in the social science field, the power is magnified hugely. When such foundations do good, they justify the tax-exempt status which the people grant them. When they do harm, it can be immense harm. There's virtually no counterforce to oppose them. So some of these foundations, they do have a, they do do decent things for the public, but it's almost like a, a facade, a justification of their existence. And, um, but you know, you get into it a little farther. Norman Dodd, who was the chairman of the Reese Committee, looked this up as well if you're interested. was interviewed by G. Edward Griffin. You can find this on YouTube where he gets into the details of the Reese Committee. It's pretty disturbing stuff. And, um, you know, don't necessarily listen to what people speak. See what they do with their hands, their actions. So it's very revealing stuff. But, um... To get back to it, this Carnegie Gospel Wealth First Edition, very rare book to have. I'm a little bit interested. In it. I might read it and hang on to it for a little while. But I also found a pile of these Camp and Trail uh, magazines, The Spirit, The Outdoors. And um, these are early 1900 um, magazines, and they were published weekly. They were one of the authorities on the subject. Um, there's articles in here written by all sorts of different people um, for sh shoot uh, firearm people fisher fishermen um, You name it trappers and These are really wonderful and they have a nice desirability um, overall and the prices actually surprised me of what certain people have up for these. I believe the cheapest I found was about at $85 for one. Also on the back, there'll, there'll be uh, uh, different ads for traps. A night of jump trap is that one. So these are wonderful. You see how they're folded up to, sh to send in the mail? Hunting in the West. They're about, on average, 16 to 20 pages. They're in relatively decent condition for for the for their age, and um, so yeah, this is something that's always going to be very popular in my shop. Outdoors uh, things are always going to be very popular. Um, I'm in a rural area on the trail of the coyote, so just loaded with with information. Um, so I thought uh, so. This was another great find in the pick. Alright everyone, that's it for me. Um, I, I showed you a couple really cool finds, a couple rare first edition books. Um, unfortunately in this pick there was only like 2% of books that, that I actually wanted and it took far longer than expected, but that's what sometimes happens. I mean it was in one of the last boxes where I found the Bambi first edition. So it does, um, you know, it was worth finishing the pick and not cutting it early but anyhow if you haven't i hope y'all like and subscribe to the channel the book peddler for more book picks and uh book reviews in shop activity i'm going to be going away in august for a bit hitting the road for some more picks and, and um yeah i hope everybody's doing well out there and uh until next time we'll see you